Tesla stock is down about 1.5% today. We do have some discouraging news to some. I'll give you my opinion on it. But what Elon Musk just said today, I think is a little bit more important than the short-term noise of Tesla's delivery numbers, and that was the bad news. So here in this video, we're going to go over everything you need to know specifically with Tesla and what's going on in the broader markets today heading into Powell tomorrow and how we're not really set up in an optimal position for tomorrow's event. But first, before we get started, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel if you would like. Grab a beer, grab a coffee, whatever you're drinking on today is a hazelnut coffee. And let's get started. The bad news is, and likely helping to contribute to Tesla's 1.5% decline today, is weekly insurance registration numbers out of China. They're not picking up the way some people thought they would. Between March 11th and March 17th, you had 12,000 insurance registrations in China, which is about 6,000, almost 7,000 lower than the same week one year ago. But when you actually look at the percentage change, that's where things get a little worse looking. Quarter over quarter from last quarter, so far, you're negative 25.7%. That's a pretty rough number. Now, we, we know we had the Chinese New Year and that affected things. Hopefully, insurance registration numbers start to pick up in China. Or maybe that is offset by strength in the U.S. or strength in Europe. Remember, the Model Y's price was just raised in the U.S. and Europe. It was not changed in China. So maybe you are seeing a little bit more weakness in China. Hopefully, that could be made up for in other markets now i do also want to point out i've heard a lot of people talk about this that q1 numbers are looking really bad and that's why tesla is raising prices starting q2 like literally day one of q2 in the u.s april 1st my birthday by the way if you were curious that Elon is trying to pull forward demand into Q1 to, to make Q1 a little bit better. Let me just be honest with you. A $1,000 price increase or price drop, in my opinion, does very little to Tesla's demand. Like if you were looking to buy a car, if your car just took a dump and Tesla is going to raise prices $1,000, does it? Is that really going to change when you're going to buy the car or not? In my opinion, this does very little to pull forward demand or, you know, add demand or, or or lose demand, right? Even when Tesla lowers prices, we've seen that last year a lot, like a lot. That's why Tesla stock is where it is today. It didn't really do much for demand, if anything. So I don't think raising prices really hurts demand the way people are implying that it does now could i be wrong in that of course if tesla were to start raising prices by three four five thousand dollars that could start to have a material impact but one thousand dollars i think that's more just to preserve margins or maybe increase margins a little bit so i wanted to throw that out there because i've seen a lot of people talk about it meet kevin made a video on tesla trying to pull forward demand because q1 is bad i've seen a lot of youtube comments a lot of people on uh, Twitter trying to make that argument as well, and it really doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Okay, just my personal opinion. Now, back to the topic here. Year over year numbers, you're down 3.9%. So if we were to continue on this pace throughout the year, we would be down almost 4% for deliveries year over year. That's, I think, a little worse. Now, things are likely to pick up. I think Q4 and Q3 could be really good quarters. But as of right now, it's just not exciting, at least to some investors that care about the short term noise of Tesla's delivery numbers. Now, what I think is a little bit more important than the short term fluctuations in Tesla's deliveries is what's going on with FSD, as Tim Cook said. Apple's CEO, if you don't know who that is, back in 2017, he said self-driving cars are the mother of all AI projects. Because if you can create a robo-taxi network 
You have the golden ticket to become the most valuable company in the world. How could you not? How could how could you not? Your margins are going to be insane on that. Your market penetration is likely to be insane as well. I know me personally, and I know basically everyone else I've talked to, they would rather have a car drive itself if it was equivalent or better than a human driver. People are a little bit, you know, on the fence when you ask them because they've never seen a car drive themselves, right? Most people, you know, don't have FSD. They don't know what FSD is. But if you said you could take one car with a real driver and you could take another car with no driver, and let's say the car with no driver is equally good, if not better than the car with a driver, would you rather ride with someone or by yourself or with your group of friends in a car with no driver? Nine times out of 10, people are going to say the car with no driver. So market penetration reasons, again, profitability reasons, actual EPS for Tesla, that's where the money is. It is in FSD, the robo taxi network. At the rate of change and the velocity that we are seeing right now, guys, it's coming. The robo taxi network should be operational at this rate of change within 12 to 24 months. Now, I've kind of shifted my expectations a little bit because I do think the robo taxi network is going to launch in select cities and then get rolled out more broadly. Select cities would be maybe San Francisco first, because they're kind of the, the, the heart of full self-driving autonomous vehicles. Maybe you get LA next, you get Phoenix, maybe you get Las Vegas, then you get New York. But let me just tell you, these cities are enough to be very accretive to Tesla. If Tesla could just launch in like four or five cities, you could see Tesla's EPS explode like on a crazy level just doing the math on that it's very accretive if you can bind the population centers the populations of la san francisco phoenix new york and las vegas you're at about 15.4 million people again i think tesla would launch in these cities first and then branch out into smaller cities and other cities now some of these cities have large taxi networks already in place some of these cities are very accretive to uh full self-driving or fully autonomous vehicles like phoenix like san francisco like la so just using these five cities these population centers and if we say 15% of the population a year uses a ride hailing service, Tesla's ride hailing service, when it launches. And we go ahead and say out of, you know, that would be 2.3 million uh, people would use that. Let's say on average, they ride in Tesla's RoboTaxi network 10 times a year. That would be 23 million drives. Let's say the average price of a taxi ride is like $56, something along those lines. Let's say Tesla charges $35 on average. That'd be $808.5 million. Maybe, you know, divide this by a profit margin of 50. So divide by two. And that could be $404 million of net profit or so. I'm just making these numbers up, but to show you what five cities could do, let alone the other, you know, hundreds or thousands that are in the US alone, you can start to look at some serious profits that could be generated from Tesla. Now, if you're investing in Tesla right now, you have to have a longer term time horizon because anything can happen in the short term. I just want to point out the exponential progress you're seeing in FSD that, I mean, you could calculate this if you want, do that down below in the comment section if you want to get super crazy with it. But the rate of change you're seeing with Tesla and FSD is unlike anything we have seen before. Now, Elon Musk just said today, Three significant improvements to FSD will roll out roughly every two weeks. Should be really shining bright by late April or early May. Every two weeks, we're now getting updates or close to that. Wow. I mean, 
how do you even put that into words? Wow is like the best I got. We were lucky before if we got an update every month or two. Holmar's catalog said that would be a great time to do a free trial and maybe that increases the penetration rate from 10% to 12% or 10% to 15 or 20% if you allowed people that free trial of FSD. And that could also be a near-term catalyst for Tesla if and when that does happen. Elon said about a year ago that they were going to do a free trial for FSD and that has not come yet. Tag Energy has turned on its $40 million, 49 megawatt, 98 megawatt hour James Field Tesla Megapack Energy Storage System in Scotland. They said, quote, we're proud to partner again with Tesla. And it looks like we have a new wrap on the Cybertruck. This one is a Satin Abyss Blue and yeah, it looks pretty dang good. Now, this is a little bit of interesting news today. Ford is working on a new electric platform to underpin a compact SUV, a small pickup, and potentially a vehicle that could be used for ride hailing. The first model will arrive in late 2026, starting around $25,000, according to Bloomberg. If Ford says 2026, they really mean like 2029. Okay, let's be honest. Add a couple years to that, and that's when you could expect a lower priced EV platform from Ford. Now, they say plans for an all electric three row SUV have been, you guessed it, delayed. Instead, Ford is focusing on developing small EVs through a specialized team in Irvine, California. The company has said little about it publicly except that the skunk words effort is led by alan clark who came to ford two years ago after leading the engineering of the model y tesla's top seller the first bentley ev is pushed back to 2026 from previously 2025 in favor of new phevs bentley also said we won't see a fully electric lineup until 2033 versus 2030 before so another auto manufacturer pushing back their plans on EVs. That's good news for Tesla. That allows Tesla to grow their lead even further. Tesla, in its latest update, is introducing a trailer alarm system for the Cybertruck. This feature extends the vehicle's alarm system to monitor the connection status of a trailer hitched to the vehicle. Audi says they are sticking to their electric vehicle strategy despite facing challenges this year. They said, quote, Audi remains committed to bringing the last vehicle with a combustion engine onto the market in 2026. Shell to unload 1,000 gas stations and pivot to EV charging. Shell says, quote, we are upgrading our retail network with expanded electric vehicle charging and convenience offers in response to changing consumer needs. Tesla is dominating Hong Kong's EV market. Between 2017 and 2024, there were more than 68,000 registered electric vehicles, of which 35,529 were registered for Tesla, accounting for 52% of the market share. Exports to Shanghai Southern Port last week were almost cleared and filled with new vehicles. So again, with that insurance registration number that we just got, we did not yet get the export number, and that's likely to be very high. And the Tesla Cybertruck has arrived in Giga Berlin over in Europe, and everyone is crowding around. Here on the day today, Tesla's stock is still down about 1.35%. Your interest rate sensitive names are really taking a beating today like a Tesla, but if you look at the NASDAQ, the triple Qs, you're up two tenths of 1%. You were actually down close to about 1% at one point today. I think this is a last ditch effort to shake everyone out of their positions. When it looked like the markets were going to fall, the markets go higher. When it looks like the markets are going to go higher, market makers like to send the markets lower. Now, there's some very specific things we're going to get into in the next video. A new Bank of America survey that shows investors are the most allocated and the most bullish to stocks that they have been since November of 2021. What happened in November of 2021? Ironically, that was the previous high for the markets back literally on November 22nd. And now you're that bullish again. So that's a little bit of a troubling sign for the bulls out there. Could be some short-term pain for Tesla as well. I want to give you guys the full scoop 
in the next video. As for today in Tesla option activity, you have 474 orders totaling $108.23 million with a positive order value of 35%. It looks like hedge funds and institutions are positioning for a drop coming next in Tesla stock. Tesla still has short interest of about 3.5% with $16.63 billion currently sold short in the stock. This is up about $1.1 billion from the number that we've seen on March 14th. And that is because Tesla stock has risen from the 150s now into the low 170s. So the shorts that have been taken on these short positions, well, the shorts that have been over the last couple of days got completely screwed as Tesla stock has made a move higher. And really, if the Fed is still on the bullish side coming tomorrow, that could lead into a huge rally for Tesla. On stock twits today, sentiment for Tesla is bearish at 41. Yesterday was at 49, so not too much different than today, but yesterday was considered neutral message volume today is a little bit lower at 49 today still considered normal yesterday was at 51 which was also normal and the participation ratio is high today at 55 which is roughly where it has been for a while now tesla is upping their advertising even more now they are running about 4,000 different ads with google and a vast majority of these are videos now their actual video advertisements a lot of them on youtube but you can also see that tesla is advertising the low starting price of the model y and the model 3 and they're also advertising quite a bit how autopilot comes standard you can see that here with the model 3 i believe this is um, advertised in Europe, I want to say, because it says Model 3 starts at $67,421. That's not the case here in the US or Canada, and that's not the case in China. So I believe that's a European ad, which is interesting, but really trying to advertise the right things. I think they want to be advertising more on like TV, potentially. My opinion, yeah, I know that's a topic of debate. I think the TV is probably the best place to be advertising at this point to reach the demographic that really needs to hear about Tesla, but I think they're on the right track nonetheless. Google Trends data for the Tesla lineup continues to explode higher. The Cybertruck is at 33, which is the high, which is the highest it's been since the Cybertruck launched back in late November, early December, so that's looking really good. The Model Y recently jumped from 34 to 36 six and the model three jumped from 37 to 39 these are the highest search trend numbers that we have seen in quite a while so it looks like maybe the cybertruck halo effect might be starting and i think that is a very underrated potential catalyst for tesla as well global inventory numbers for the model y showing a downtick here and really a downtick across the board for the model y model x model s and uh, Model 3, specifically the Model S and the Model 3, very low inventory numbers, around a 1,000 apiece. The percent of stocks above their 50-day moving average today is up about 2.77%. That is because you are starting to see a broader rally in our markets. Again, your interest rate sensitive name still really not playing along, but your Russell 2000 is up 0.58%. Uh, any of my interest rate sensitive stocks I own or look at Fubo, SoFi, Tesla, right? Very interest rate sensitive names. They're not doing all too well. The NASDAQ is up 0.41%. S&P up 0.46%. And the Dow is up 0.6%. The VIX is only down about 2%. So I want you guys to be a little bit careful with this rally that we're seeing right before the Fed because the Fed is probably not going to be the market's friend tomorrow. But again, we'll talk about that in the next video. In the grand scope of things, Tesla stock hit a low today of $167.31. You've bounced from that about $4 and some change. So Tesla was down a lot more. It's not down as much right now. We still do have about an hour left of trading. Uh, so we'll see what happens in the last hour or so. I expect we could see a large move to the upside, more than likely to the downside though. Could I be wrong? 
of course. I could be wrong about all of this. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. Come to your own opinions and your own conclusions before you invest your money. Now, the MACD is starting to curl up, starting to look better there. The RSI is still at 39.02. So even though Tesla has bounced from the look from like the 160 level, you're still very oversold and you're still negative on the RSI, which is, I mean, good if, if you think Powell is going to be bullish tomorrow and good for markets tesla stock should really be able to outperform now if tesla can get above about 175 uh coming tomorrow that's where you also get into a larger rally above 175 you're setting yourself up for a rally back to about 195 which is currently where the 50 day moving average is and then i would expect more resistance around that level here on the day today tlt is up 0.3 Three eight percent. That means ten year treasury yields are well falling today. If you take a look at ten year treasuries, they are down about four basis points. Also interesting heading into Powell. I think a lot of this has to do with the Bank of Japan. The market's priced in maybe a surprise from the Bank of Japan. That surprise did not come. So you are seeing yields falling yet again today. The dollar is up about zero point fifteen percent, which is reacting to the the yen that is falling so that makes sense not as exa not exactly great for markets but not terrible as well and gold is down 0.15 percent i expect gold could move quite a bit with the fed tomorrow as well now nvidia whole nother can of worms that thing is crazy 50 dollar move today from the low at about 850 dollars to where it is now at about 900 dollars you did see a buy the rumor sell the news situation with nvidia at first and then everyone started buying NVIDIA uh, after that brief sell-off in the uh, early early trading hours today. So NVIDIA is definitely a stock that is helping to contribute to this rally that we are seeing today. Now, if you actually look at the NASDAQ, you're right at the cusp of being back into this bullish channel. I mean, markets are fighting to stay bullish but I think it's really going to come down to the last hour of trading or so. If we hold this level or rise from here, it looks like we might stay in that bullish channel. But if you see a fall into the end of the day today, well, you're going to be under this line, this uptrending support line. And that's going to be a bigger negative heading into Powell tomorrow. The technicals um, would be bearish if you are under this line here. So let me know what you think about all of this information down below in the comment section. Hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel. If you guys want to come trade with us live in real time, check out that link down below in the description of this video. Follow the X account as well over there. It's Michael Tyler. Cost you nothing to do so. You guys enjoy the rest of your day and I will see you in the next one.